Episode 10, the Season 2 finale of Surreal Estate, titled Letting Go, picks up where Episode 9 left off. Susan comes back to the agency, but she's not who she seems. She is possessed by the house, and it's kind of the house in human form. Luke is trying to figure that out, but everybody else sees Susan as who Susan is, but it's very different and uncomfortable. Now, as I stated for my Season 2 episodic reviews, each character in an episode this season had their own subplot. Augie, Phil, Zoe, even the minor characters like Rochelle, and then introducing a new character, another real estate agent, uh, Lomax. It was a big, big aspect of trying to keep each character given their own story, even with focusing on Luke and where Susan was the entire time. The episode was really well written, very emotional, very put forth forward. The reason I say that is because the aspect of what you think is going on is very, very different. Now, Luke goes to see Susan technically Susan, at the house as a housewarming kind of gift, gives her a plant and she shakes her hand and you can see and Roman senses it that it's Susan talking through the house. Now all the while you have Phil being the father, newly uh, fathered that he is, and as he's talking to his husband on the phone, he gets a knock at the door and it's a priest. The priest comes in, sits down, and asks Phil to come back to become a Catholic priest once again. The reason being is because there are demonic possessions of ye young kids happening, even infants. And it's like, oh, this is interesting aspect. Is that what, you know, kind of Phil has been hearing? Certain aspects of what's going on with his newly born adopted daughter. Uh, and then the priest kind of gives feel like you'll have access to everything you want, things that you didn't have before. So that story is interesting and very, very fun. Also, we have Augie and trying to, you know, he has a nice little love interest with Rochelle, who we were introduced to in a few episodes ago. And it's really nice to see that. All the while that's going on, we see Zoe trying to figure out what's going on with Susan. And Zoe's still trying to juggle out like what she wants to do with her life. And then you have the aspect of Luke the main character of this entire series and like figuring out like how he can do something uh, to help Susan and he's at the bowling alley and we finally see him speak to his father once again and he wants to kind of get closure for that and it's a nice back and forth but it's really really done really really well now we also have Lomax who is trying to help Elsa, the older woman at this uh, apartment who doesn't want to leave, but she kind of wants a new house. So Luke and Lomax kind of, in a way, kind of represent this house that Susan is in, the forever home. But then we get a backstory to the house that Susan is at. Luke goes and meets Thomas Rabbitfoot. And we figure out that Thomas Rabbitfoot, and the reason his name is Rabbitfoot is because he explains that his grandfather coming into Ellis Island, the people writing the name down, last name, could not pronounce the name. So they kind of gave him Rabbitfoot because he had the lucky Rabbitfoot in his pocket. Uh, and then we see that he was an architect and built this house for this woman who was always eight to nine months out to sea working. Something tragic happened to her and the house kind of like became emotional and lost that kind of attachment to the woman that lived there. And the aspect of Rabbitfoot explaining that when anybody moved in, they only stayed a week and then they had to leave because they weren't this previous owner. Rabbitfoot then shows a image and picture of the previous woman that was there that was that he built the house for and then we see that it looks exactly like Susan like what and then slowly the house is telling Susan to kind of get everyone away by themselves in order to kill them <laughs> Susan kind of has a chance to do that with Augie but she stops herself by pushing him off a cliff. She kind of does the same thing with Phil in the car. She drives around and everything, everywhere, and she's driving really, really fast around curves and bends on the road, and 
she doesn't do it and she stops and then you see phil look at susan and susan mouths the words help me she goes me so it's really interesting to see that now we see that everything happens and everything comes to a culmination in the end and it's like holy shnikes crap what the hell is going on everyone's doing their own little thing we see susan kind of talking to luke and then there's a break in at the back door zoe's there zoe breaks one of the alexa google home mods and then susan using her fire powers kind of traps her there we then see phil doing a demonic possession ritual and but he is being choked and then we see augie and rochelle use this kind of new mechanism that kind of separates the entity from the actual person that's kind of working but susan is so overpowering and with the house and powerful that she does that and then as luke is like where is luke you find out he's outside but someone is coming toward him and we find out that the person that's coming toward him is the woman that lost her life at sea that used to live in this house that the house had an attachment to and luke is like i think you have some unfinished business Luke brings the woman in, but we don't see her face. We just see like the back of her and she hugs Susan and the house kind of like releases Susan. And then we see Lomax and the older, older woman uh, who doesn't die, Elsa, come in and Lomax is like, well, you know, hey, I think it's I should have called some bad time. So Susan comes out of her spell. The house has what it wants. And it's a really, really interesting, nice, touching story that happened. And then you think it's over, but then we see that everyone is at the office the next day and uh, Susan is giving her speech. And then Luke says that everyone is leaving. Phil's going to Rome. Augie's going to go work with Rochelle and Zoe's going to become a lawyer. And then at the end of it, we see that Luke changes the screen behind him and it says the Roman Ireland Agency. He made Susan his partner in this uh, real estate agency, which is really, really nice to see. And it was a nice, nice little moment. So right now, while Phil, Augie, and Zoe are gone, it's just Luke, Susan, and Lomax. And then at the end, we see Luke go to his father's grave. He sits down. His father appears once again, talks to him. And it's a nice, touching moment. It's a really, really well-written by um, the creator of this show, George R. Olson, who wrote the this episode, the finale, and the seventh episode, and then the first episode of this season. And it was really, really good to see, and that was a nice ending. But then we see that um, Luke kind of gets a phone call, and it's Megan Donovan. Uh, Luke's kind of, you know... Uh, love interest from the first season so it's going to be interesting to see what happens this first um way of how things are going it's really really interesting and fun but i'm really curious to see what's going to happen now if season two is the end of this series it was a nice way to end it but with it leaving it open with luke getting a call from megan what can happen if there is a season three? Now, with the ending of season one that happened back in September of 2021, sci-fi kind of canceled the show. But then they backtracked and they reversed their decision and reversed the cancellation and said that the second season is happening and we didn't know when it was going to uh, premiere. Well, it premiered October in 2023. The ratings were solid through all of the first season having close to 250,000 to close to 500,000 viewers an episode. Also, this season, their highest rated episode had 239,000 viewers with a low of 130,000. So people are watching the show by word of mouth. It's picking up. It's getting good. Uh, give me a third season of Surreal Estate. Love the actors. Love the characters. You've grown to love them. And if you haven't seen this show, you are really really missing out it's very rare that a second season of a show is better than the first season but surreal estate accomplished that to a point where you introduce a new character midway through the season it works you introduce the subplots of the minor characters and giving them a story it works very rare that shows can do that and then still focus on the main character and the other main character that's going through an ordeal but we don't see them through the entire second season only through 
couple show ups here and there and that was it it's a very well written series i absolutely love it and seeing that tim rosin and sarah levy who you may know from schitt's creek and then tim rosin also did winona earp there are some other um i want to say uh, actors who are also from Winona Earp on this and who also directed it. Uh, Mo Melanie Scarfano also directed a few episodes and she also starred in one episode. But it's good to see that the average viewership for season one is 314,700. I'm curious to see what the average viewership is for season two. If you like paranormal, if you like original storytelling, if you like the flow of how everything is if you like practical effects which i've been saying since the beginning of my season two reviews this is a show for you it's 10 episodes perfect fantastic you watch it on a streaming service or hulu the next day you can binge this it's two seasons with 10 episodes each so 20 episodes in total it's a great show you'll love the characters if you love the actors it's a fun, it's it's absolutely fun i i would not steer anybody wrong about movies or even tv shows for that matter this second season was good and hit the mark i'm hoping fingers crossed that the sci-fi network channel really picks it up for a third season and pushes it the boundaries to give it more of a production give it more value get some more familiar actors and actresses in here from canada the u.s whatever it is or more so cameo appearances that would be fun that would be great that would make so much more sense and get the directors who directed it to come back the writers to write to come back It'll be cohesive, it'll work, it'll be so much fun to see what happens if there is a season three. For me, the second season, season two of Surreal Estate gets five out of five stars. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about Surreal Estate season two. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? What did you think about the aspect of every single episode? Did you like that the house was the big villain in a way and that there were subplots for the minor characters uh, for like Phil, Augie, and Zoe? Did you like having new characters come in in the middle of the season like Lomax and Rochelle? And do you want to see a third season of Surreal Estate? Or do you think the way this second season ended was a good, good ending? And, do you, and what do you think is going to happen now? Let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked. And also let me know what rating you would give season two of Surreal Estate. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new review videos on my channel. I'll see you all in the next review video. I'm Mr. Filmstock, and thank you so much for tuning in to my episodic weekly review of Season 2 of Surreal Estate.